Rich, do you just want to kick off with the news about, about Sutty and where, where you are with him? Yeah, look, we named him in our squad this week, but um, he, he obviously couldn't make it through past half time last week. Um, since March, really, he's been, we've been uh, uh, looking after him. You know, he's not been training every day. Uh, we've been trying to get him in a, in a physical state that he can play uh, on a weekend. Look, I think he's played exceptionally well for us as well, given, given what we've known behind the scenes and changes of position. Uh, whether he's played fullback, standoff, centre, right side, left side, I think he's been a real shining light for us this year. But yeah, he's succumbed to his his knee injury. Uh, subsequently, seen uh, a surgeon uh, last night, and unfortunately, he'll need microfracture surgery, which will rule him out for you know it's a four to six month recovery period. So we're looking to try and get that done early next week. I think we're confirming it, hoping to confirm it for Wednesday, get it done as soon as we can. Uh, so we'll be back, obviously we'll be back in contention for the start of last year, but it's a blow to us because, you know, I think he's, you know, I think he's been great for us this year. And this is just wear and tear, is it? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, pretty, pretty much. He's had it, as I say, James, he's had it for a while now, uh, but it's really, it really flared up at, at the start of this season and we've had to, uh, we've had to really manage uh, the loaded on it. He's not been able to train back to back days. Um, you know, we've had to we've had to really look after him early parts of the week to try and get him on the field for for a weekend as well. But again, uh, that's probably made it a little bit more difficult with a heavy load. You know, we had we had the I don't know five games in sixteen days, and we just come off the back of four games in fourteen days, which again probably uh, probably accelerates. Uh, accelerates the need to get this done and, and makes it even you know even dif- more difficult to manage with uh, with such heavy you know heavy loading with the schedule that we've got. Um, Mikolai, yeah, I had an operation. Uh, depending on where we make this season, uh, we, there's a chance we could see him again. But the likelihood is James will lose him for the season too, which again, um, I think when you took Mikolai and and Matty out of our team, as we've seen. Uh, last week, they're, they're two massive holes for us to fill. I think Mick, Mick and Matty have, and probably Liam really, you know, certainly Mick and Matty have been our best players this year. I think Mick's been one of the standout forwards in the competition. I think he's had exceptionally good form, uh, showed a terrific, you know, terrific rate of development over the last 12 to 18 months. Uh, and yeah, it's a blow and he, he's gutted. He's gutted that his season's over. Uh, it's a different injury than, than the one he, he picked up. Um, you know, a few weeks ago, it's sort of the same foot, uh, but slightly, slightly different area. So we, he went, uh, went and had an operation. Uh, what day are we on here? Thursday. You had an operation uh, a few days ago, I think, uh, maybe Monday, Tuesday. And yeah, it's a, yeah, it, it's an injury that will keep him out probably for the whole year, James. Um, Matt is currently isolating. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Matt's Matt's a, a, obviously a COVID issue, so you know he, he won't be back. You know he, he won't be back this week either. So how tough has it been to put a side together for this week? Oh no, we'll have we'll have a team, mate. It's uh, yeah, we're getting thin. I think I think we named uh, nineteen players. We we named Liam, knowing full well that there were every chance he would get ruled out uh, as twenty, and we've named Levi Edwards. I think as as twenty one. Uh, but we've got Levi, Liam Tyndall, and, and Corey Hall out on loan playing in the championship. And um, you know, we're happy that they're getting, you know, they're getting opportunity to play some games and get some really good minutes in. Uh, but yeah, we'll, you know, we've got we've got, I think, a, a competitive team out on the park tomorrow night, mate. And what it does, it it means that everybody else has got to assume some responsibility. And uh you know, we've got some big shoes to fill, uh, but we've also got some vastly experienced players in this team as well. Given the news about Liam, you could have your six and seven together for the first time this week. How important is it now going <laughs> forward that they get a, a run together? Uh, yeah, it is. Look, it's been difficult for Robbie. I think, you know, we're not, we're not hiding any sort of secrets here when we say Robbie's, Robbie's struggled with fitness through his injuries and, and getting back to match, match fitness. And that's still... You know, that's still very evident. Um, but Spine has been a, 
uh, been a constant issue for us, James. Really, rarely have we put the same spine out two weeks running, and quite often we know we've had to play people out of position and have you know makeshift players in there. Um, we'd just love to get some continuity, you know, from here on in for the last uh, seven, eight games and, and on the run into the playoffs. We'd love to get, um, you know, get those combinations, keep everybody on the park and have, have a stable lineup with, you know, obviously with a couple of boys uh, to come back in there, Matt, Matt Pryor being a notable one. So, uh, yeah, it'd be, it'd be good to get those two back in tandem. You know, they work really well as a pair since they both come to the club. Um, and the combination with Richie at fullback has, has generally been a pretty positive one for us. So it's been a long time coming. We're in round 19 now before we managed to get as, uh, you know, as number six and number seven on the park together. Uh, but that's just been, you know, unfortunately, that's been symptomatic for our season. And, and look, James, a lot of clubs have, have faced similar issues too because of the whole the whole nature of, of the way the competition is at the moment. So how do you assess the challenge of a trip to Lee right now? Well, look, we, we need to bounce back from last week, first and foremost. I think we had a couple of good, intense games. Again, again, Hall and, and Warrington. You know, we had a great win again, Hall, and you know, probably a bit disappointed we didn't come up with a win again at Warrington. But I said post-match last week, you know, I fought both sides of the ball. We were off. We, we, we certainly lacked the energy in his, in his defence and his, in his tackle. Um, I said to concede 32 points. Some of the tries, you know, again, the run of play. And uh, I think 15 minutes we dominated the game and found ourselves 40 0 down on the scoreboard. Um, it, you know, the seven day turnaround, I think we've been really grateful for this time. And, and again, we'll put the emphasis on on tidying up some areas in our game, James, really. I think looking at the, the challenge of Lee, obviously uh, they had a real near miss again, OKR last week, played with tons of spirit. And I think last time we played them, uh, we highlighted to our players that they can cause you some problems with the ball. You know, undoubtedly, uh, they're a team that are looking to to get energy with, with what they do in, in the way they play with the ball in their hands. Certainly got some quality players. I think the loose forward, Bell's been a real prominent player for them. Uh, really skillful in the middle of the field. Joe Meller you know, dominates a lot of possession. But we'd look to the... Uh, how they get forward. You know, Matty Russell can get the sets going really well. So can, you know, so can Junior Sal. Um, so, you know, we understand the threats that, that come with them. Um, you know, I thought we did a really professional job on them last time we played them. Um, and, you know, we're looking for more of the same, mate. We're looking for, um, you know, certainly a bounce back and, and a response in a couple of areas that we felt we were really down, you know, really down on in our performance against Castleford for where we'd been for the previous two weeks, two games. Just lastly for me, Rich, obviously it's very hard to, to try and work out with the win percentage, et cetera. But have you sort of got any idea in your mind how many wins it might take from here on in to, to clinch a six? Uh, well, look, internally, James, a couple of weeks ago, we set ourselves some challenges in, in little blocks. It, you know, it's fair to say that uh, after the Castleford game, you know, that we got across again that one, which I think... In, in our minds and our calculations, leave, leaves us one to catch up on from here on in. There's, that, that means there's less margin for error. Uh, but at the same time, we think it's really doable. And, and it's very hard to say how many points and percentage you need because, as we saw last week, you know, Hall got called off again, Warrington. We don't know if that game's going to get replayed or not. Um, so we, I guess that there's a lot around us on how you know how many games are going to get played and squeezed in in terms of the ones that have been called off there's one thing i know is we know where we're at and we think we know how many uh, how many wins we've we've got to get and where roughly that will lead us on a point points uh, percentage performance but some of those targets james you'll appreciate uh, you know we'll keep in house but I, look, I think there's just going to be a lot of twists and turns from now and um the schedule and COVID will still probably have its say on on the rest of you know the rest of the competition in terms of what the table is going to look like in five or six weeks' time. Cheers, Rich. Good luck tomorrow. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Morning, Rich. All right, mate. Morning, Aaron. All right, pal. Yeah, good. Um, just on Mick. Um, obviously, you know, I agree. He's been one of the best props in the comp this year. Do you think he's one of a few props in the game who's really benefited from these rule changes? We're seeing more mobile, dynamic forwards really coming to the fore and he seems like he fits that mould, doesn't he? 
Yeah, he does. Um, look, makes about 112 kilo and, he, and he's fast. You know, his leg, his leg speed is tremendous. And you can imagine stood in front of Mick when he's got, you know, a 10 metre run up uh, and a half quick play the ball, how difficult it would be to, to tackle him. You know, he's, he's got such explosive power uh, and he is, you know, he's, he's a terrific athlete. But I think, you know, we'll point out about Mick too, he's, he's just such a good kid, Aaron. You know, he went through, uh, mate, I, I would say rather than the rule change, because I, I think he, whatever the rules are, I think at the moment when you look at the specimen Mick is and how he's playing, I think whatever the rules are, Mick's going to be a, you know, Mick's going to be a handful. Um, but I think I, I would look back to probably a couple of years ago when he were in and out of the team. And, you know, I, I, I had him in and out of the team at times. And there were some games where um, he had some short game time. He, he were a guy that were very hard on himself. And, um, you know, confidence will probably, uh, you know, the, the consistency in... Uh, I guess the confidence areas of his game, you know, one, one sort of poor moment could really play on Mick's mind and, and create him a little bit of anxiety about his performance. Um, he certainly worked really hard, Aaron, on, on defensively, uh, going after people. You know, he comes out of the line regularly and, and just as he goes after people with the ball, which is what you're talking about, you'll find a lot of examples this year where he's starting to go after people defensively too, using his line speed and his power and, and p- picking people out. And he's just fixed up some of the detail in his game around marker, inside shoulder, coming off square and all that. So it's frightening to think, mate, that he's, I think he's 22, is he? he you know, there's, there's still a lot of improvement in him too, you know, and, and as we've seen, not only is his power, he's, he's got a confidence to pass the ball when he's needed to. Now he's challenging himself again, the better front rowers in the game. Um, when he comes up again, you know, I guess the guys that are, looked upon as as internationals and, and prominent players. Uh, you know, he's he's enjoying going head to head against some of those guys. So yeah, it's been he's he's been a you know, he's been a real uh, success story for us this year. And, and I think there's a lot of improvement in him yet too. Yeah, he's he's obviously had that England call up this year. Um, yeah. everyone's disappointed the World Cup isn't on, but in a way, pushing it back a year for someone like Mikolai could be huge, couldn't it? If he carries on, on this trajectory, I mean he'll be some player by next autumn, won't he? Yeah, I would think so, mate. And, and look, as is the case with a lot of young guys, uh, games helps him, you know, play, playing games. And I think that he's benefited from, you know, we made a decision that Mick was going to be our future. And at some point, sometimes with younger players, Aaron, you do have to wear some mistakes and some some lesser performances in the knowledge that, you know, in 30, 30, 40 games time, they're going to be in a lot better position. And I think they look at me, you look at Harry Newman in that case, and we're probably going through that with Tommy all right now. You know, we feel Tommy's Tommy's a player of immense talent. And and every now and then, you know, as we've seen over the last couple of weeks, he gets some bits wrong and he has some off days. But again, we you know, we've got a lot of faith and confidence in him that that we'll get him through that and um, you know, we we'll get the benefit of him long term. But yeah, I think if the World Cup does go ahead next year. Uh, it, it is a strong goal and Mickey's to be in and around uh, Sean's thoughts which it was this season you know, which we challenged him to do and, and obviously it was brilliant that he managed to get in and, and get that start and I thought he did a really good job in that too you know he's, he is a guy Aaron that um, you know his game time's increasing you know his, his ability to play big and long minutes he's, he's done an 80 minute game for us today uh, uh, not today sorry th- this season Um yeah, he's he's turning into a you know a real good all round player, mate. Good stuff. Cheers, mate. Thanks, bud. Hi, Rich. Hey, Matt. All right, bud. Not too bad. Not too bad. Um, just on on the injuries now. I think you you've had like one injury crisis, and about what two weeks ago things looked to be brightening up ever so slightly. We're back here again now how just from a personal perspective how draining is it for you having to deal with this as a coach where it, I mean you, you can't have had anything like this before for, for such a prolonged period uh, I'll try and honest uh, answer it as honestly as I can you know it's easy for us to put to put spin on it but it's it is, it's frustrating um, it, it's frustrating for us as coaches there's a little bit of frustration in it for the guys too, because 
um, you know, rarely have we had our starting middle out on the park this year. You know, we think our starting middle with Mick and, and Matty Pryor and, and Zane is a very, very good one. Uh, rarely have we had the continuity in our spine. We've regularly chopped and changed our spine. Some of our best players, you know, I'm talking Ash Anley's had a very punctuated season through, excuse me, through, through injury and through COVID issues. Uh, but I'd say it's almost the normal way of working at the moment, given given the way the comp is. I, I do think we've had our fair share. You know, I think undoubtedly uh, we've we've had a lot of circumstances out of our control this year around availability of our squad, and it has had an impact on our season. It had an impact on us pre-season, um, and it's having an impact uh, as we talk now. You know, we we felt same as you. We had some light at the end of the tunnel, but we're back in managing day-to-day -day situations and and a changing landscape, which uh, I think when you look at the teams uh, sat at the top of the competition, they have probably, you know, they've had some really good consistency in in their lineup. You know, we, we'll also look at it ourselves in the off-season, Matt, and see if there's areas uh, that we need to invest in uh, and need to improve to try and get as much control of it as we can but but a lot of it a lot of this stuff as you know as unfortunately been out of our control and yeah it's, it's frustrating mate but um we, we just gotta you know we just gotta keep emphasizing the positives and we still got a lot of confidence in the guys that are available to us moving forward um and i'm probably looking at this as a wider game thing i think a lot of people a lot of coaches a credit in the number of injuries that there's been due to a short pre-season and that didn't maybe get the, the contact and, and the hard yards in as there. Does that need to be considered when there's talks about potentially extending the season this year, about when it starts next year and, and all of those things? Um, it's probably a really long-winded answer. Yeah, you know, I've I've gone on record before with you guys and talked about you know we had an inability to dig the well deep enough this this preseason. We had probably twelve to fourteen guys training, so the guys that did have a preseason had a really good one, and uh, and some of those guys have shown the rewards. We had a lot of younger players training, so so we did miss a, a stack of players. I think there's a lot thrown into that, and and some of it again is unknown and uncontrollable. You know, we had a six month gap in the season last year. And then we had a massive congested fixture list. Then we had a shorter pre-season. Um, and again, we've had a, a very, you know, our, ourselves, we just as I said, on, on the back of four games in 14 days, after playing sort of five games in 16 days, three weeks before, that's not something that's been done before. You know, we, we as a game, we got rid of Easter, the two games, because we felt we were overloading the players. Now we're doing that, you know, we're doing that sort of stuff three and four times in the season. Um, so I, th I think there's a lot of variables, probably still a lot of unknown, you know, in terms of the data and the science behind it as to the impact it's had. But you would have to look at the competition, the amount of injuries and say th there's potentially some factors in uh, in the way that the, the competition has uh, worked out over the last sort of 12 months to say, you know, 12 to 18 months to say, yeah, that probably is... Uh, you know, there probably is some reasons in there why teams are, um, you know, picking injuries. We, we are we are playing games regular without having any real preparation into the game. So, so one area you talked about, uh, the contact area. We yeah, we've been very limited in the amount of contact we've been able to do, uh, and there's also COVID issues around that. You know, in terms of. Uh, um, letting players do full on wrestle sessions with each other you run the risk of losing your whole squad if you do that so um so yeah I, i'm sure mate that it is does that mean we extend the season um yeah i'm not too sure i think if we want parity in the fixture list it gives you more chance but that's not guaranteed either we could extend the season and, and encounter a load of problems again i think um uh, you know, the one thing I would say about, about the World Cup, the, the well, it is a major negative. The, the one positive is that after the two seasons we've just had, hopefully it does give the players adequate rest and an adequate pre-season into next year, which hopefully is a World Cup year. I think 
if we can get a, a, a good pre-season, a regular fixture list through next year, it will leave the elite players in a much better place to play a World Cup. 